Hey there. When it comes to centers, the setup is an essential piece to make sure that your centers are running smoothly. Things to think about when it comes to setting up centers are, are your students set up so that they can work independently? Do they have everything they need so they, don't, they aren't digging for things um, and asking you tons of questions? We're gonna cover the five must-knows of a successful center time when it comes to setting them up. And actually, before we get into those five must-knows, you'll see here that we have tons of different video trainings all about math centers. And if you haven't had a chance to check those out, make sure you take the time to do that. Links will be below this video. All right, must-know number one. When you are planning your centers to get them all set up for your students, the first place you're going to start is the skills. The skills, start with the skills. Don't get distracted by fun activities first. Start with the skills that your students are going to need to review. And that's a key word, review. Centers are made for review time. I know that brand new teachers sometimes will be tempted to put um, centers out there that are teaching the skill or maybe it's only been a school skill that was introduced one time. Don't do that. This is a chance for your students to practice those skills and review them because they've already been taught and they've already been practiced. So start with the skills. Must know number two is give options for differentiation. In a previous video, you would have seen that my center time is a time to have flexible groups, which means that we have students from all different levels working inside of the same group, choosing some of the same activities from the same tub. So I find it's important to include a couple different choices so that your students that are more on the struggling side will have something that they can work independently at and your advanced learners have some, something that's going to still challenge them um, at that independent level. So for example, if we are working on, let's just say addition, and the center is going to be toothy, I'm going to throw a couple different toothy sets in there to hit on addition. I can differentiate by including some counters for those students that are going to need them for support. Let's say if our skill is all things place value, and I'm using our math centers, I might choose a few different math centers that still teach place value, but maybe I'll include some that go up into the hundreds um, versus maybe I also have some that are just two digit numbers. So you can see how you can still practice the same skill, but provide a couple different dif options for differentiation so that your students are all working at their independent level that still is a bit challenging so that they stay engaged. Must know number three is your rotation chart. Just make sure that your groups are looking the way that you want your groups to look because they are the groups that are going to be in place for the whole week, but also make sure that you have updated your activity choices so that they know which center they're going to rotate to every single day. Step number four is plan for everything. Your goal is to stay one step ahead of your students. You don't want your students leaving their center to go find a pencil, to go sharpen their pencil, to go find any type of supply, that you don't want them to have to ask you any questions because you have your own things to do during center time. So plan for everything, stay a step ahead. What does that mean? For example, when you are um, setting up your center tubs, um, think about, like I said, sharpened pencils. Not only just pencils, but sharpened pencils and throw in extras. Make sure you have erasers in there. Do these centers need crayons or markers? Do they need any type of manipulative? Do they need dice? Do they need clipboards? Do they need dry erase pockets or expo markers or erasers? plan ahead. And one little tip that I find to be helpful is I, I literally go through each of the activities in my mind from start to finish. And as I'm going through them in my mind, I think to myself, well, what would need be needed if I was a student using this activity? And I throw it in there. Even if it's a, a question of, oh, I wonder if they will want to use these, put them in there. Um, your goal is to keep them at their center so that they are independently working on the activity without help. When it comes to setting these up, you also need to think about containers. I feel like I am the queen of containers, containers for everything. The reason we want containers for everything is that it gives your students a very easy way to know, first of all, 
how to clean things up because everything has a, a spot, a, des a designated spot. It's also going to ensure that when your students get to that center, they know where everything is and they can easily access the things themselves. So containers, containers, containers for everything. Trust me, it will make your life easier. I know little, <laughs> I don't know if I should even be sharing this. One little, um, Fun, not so fun fact, when I first started teaching, I didn't know the beauty of containers, as silly as that sounds. And I would actually spend, after school, um, a significant amount of time going through each of those tubs because I knew it was going to be important that my kids um, didn't go to a messy tub of stuff. And so I would go to those tubs after school and spend a significant amount of time cleaning everything up and getting everything organized again please don't do that. If you are a teacher that finds yourself doing that and organizing these tubs because your students get, didn't get things put back in the right way, containers. <laughs> containers and expectations. Another way to stay a step ahead of your students when it comes to setting these up is inside of the containers also include directions of any kind simple directions so that when your students are getting to that center and they are wondering what was it we were supposed to do here again, they can read the direction cards. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, not all of my kids can read. Well, guess what the beauty of flexible groupings is? Um, you have high students that are good readers in every single center. And so that child might be the person that reads those center directions out loud before everyone gets started. Or maybe it's just that go-to person that the kids can go to if they need a little bit of reminding on what that center includes. So center directions. All right, and must know number five is to keep your storage containers for your centers always in the same spot. For me, my in my most recent classroom, I had a shelf where all of my centers just always were they, that's where they always were. And I would always have, for me, I had tables. So the red tub would go to the red table. The blue tub would go to the blue table. The green tub would go to the green table. The yellow tub would go to the yellow table. But that helped huge. And also just always having those center tubs right there. So your students know when it's time for centers, they don't have to say, well, where do we go for this and that and the other thing? No, you just, you always go to that same spot. Kids thrive on consistency and routines. So finding that spot in your classroom that is easy to access, has some space around it so kids can get to it super important. I hope that you found this video helpful to you. We are going to be having our next video be all about launching math centers where we have a bunch of ideas to make sure that it's successful in your classroom and not a headache. <laughs> um, if you wanted to dig into any of the centers that you saw in this video, we have them for both math and literacy um, centers. We have first grade materials, second grade materials, toothy for centers, um, like I said, centers themselves, puzzles, and so much more. So um, make sure that you go below this video to check them out.